Tony, you last fought Paul Smith three years ago. Tell us, for those who haven't seen the fight, what happened and how do you think you know you, did, you gave a good performance? Since 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 then, I've had a lot of sleepless nights. You know, I, um, most of my options at super middleweight, you know, passed me by after that fight. So uh, you know, I moved up to light heavyweight for a little bit, won a few titles there, done the prize fighter for Matum, done really well, and the cuts let me down. You know, I would have won that tournament. Um, you know, sleepless nights just got me the, the my mind, and you know, I had to make a decision. Um, change my lifestyle, change change my trainer to get everything right. If I'm if I'm gonna succeed and do what I want to do, you know, what needed to be done, I've done it. And um, I'm just lo- I'm just excited to be back on a matchroom show. You know, I won the British title back with matchroom in 2003. Um, I'm you know I'm happy that I know for a fact I'm gonna do the same on the 29th of this month. And in, in the last fight, um, cuts like you just mentioned with your prize fight uh, opportunity, cuts almost stopped that last fight when Paul had a couple of over over his eye. Um, did you think it was going to stop it? And uh, do you think it was fair to carry on? Yeah, I honestly did think it was going to be stopped. The cuts were horrific, but um, you know, fair play to Paul. He stuck in there and he got the win. Um, I, I'm not really uh, bothered too much about what's happened in the past. Now the past is the past. Let's leave it there. Let's move forward. Um, and that's what I'm planning on doing on the 29th. You know. We could sit here all day with a million fights that could have been and should have been, but you're never going to move forward in life if you if you if you think about it too much. I've corrected the things that I think that I was doing wrong, and you know I'm looking forward to it. And and you mentioned moving up to light heavyweight uh, in the time since the last fight. Um, did you enjoy it there? How did you feel? And now that you're back at Super Middle, is this the weight you want to be fighting at forever? Well, let's put it this way. I moved up to light heavyweight for one reason only, opportunities. The opportunities were there for me at light heavy. There was nothing at super middle. Um, I could get on the scales now, possibly be a two pound overweight. I could make championship weight today if they want me to. So it's where it should be. I've always been a super middle and I should never have moved up. But as I say, I'd rather have excuse me, moved up and been active. And then, you know, when the time was right, like now, move back down. So the, a busy fighter is always a better fighter. Well, I was speaking to Paul Smith the other day, and he said that because of the, the delays there have been on this fight, he thinks it's given you an advantage um, uh, in the fact that you can make the weight better. You've had more time to prepare for this weight. Is this true? And do you think do you think it's helped in your favour? If he if he thinks that, then good on him. But I've been twelve stone two for the last five weeks. I, I've got no problem with the weight. I'll get my six back out now. I'll get my scales right now and show that I'm a, you know I'm lighter than he is right now. So let him if he thinks that that's that's the key, then let him think that that's the key. But making a weight's no problem. He's just got to live a disciplined life, and I have. And what Tony Dodson are we going to see on the 29th? You're going to see a Tony Dodson that's willing to do anything to get the win. Um, I'm, I'm confident now. Back with John Rice, me the say that I won the title back in 2003 with is in my corner. He's turned me, he's turned me around as not only a fighter but as a person as well. And um, I'm just looking to showcase on the 29th. So you're going to see whatever whatever Tony Dodson it needs to be to win the fight. And tactically, do you think it'll be a similar fight? I'm not really bothered what you know what type of fight it is, what way it's going to. I'm going to do whatever needs to be done to win, and that's all that matters. You know, I can guarantee one thing: the fans are going to get a fantastic fight. Scouts pride at stake. Paul's not interested in all that he said. He's not bothered about being the best at Liverpool, but I'm a proud scouser. Do you know what I mean? I, I'll be proud to you know get 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 revenge over Paul and then um, hopefully move forward. And uh, you touched on it before, but since your last fight with, with Paul, um, you were very unlucky in the prize fight. You got through to the final, and then you weren't allowed to box it because of the cuts. Is that worse than losing in the final? Well, it was with the format, because I ended up getting the loser's money. You know, the guy that came in as a reserve stepped in and got 16 grand. I walked away with less than seven. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how that works. I think it's all been reformed now, how it works. So, well, it would be just, you know, for my unfortunateness, it would do after my fight. You know what I mean? It got all reformed and all that. But, yeah, it was disappointing. But at the same time, I think um, after Paul's fight, he had to show that I've still got it. You know what I mean? I had to show that, you know, I'm still... Um, Still a contender, and they did in the prize fighter. You know, I beat Bambula. I actually schooled Bambula, who was coming off in Korea best wins. I got a draw with Tony Oki. I got a got a draw with um, Tony Jeffries. Beat Tony Oki. Retired Tony Oki, and then I schooled him. And then Manny Edwards, you know, big guy, is strong, unbeaten. You know, I'd, I'd done him as well. So I was, you know, I think I proved that. I, I, you know, I'm still like a, a contender and still a force to be reckoned with. And um. 
Uh, two fights ago, you, you lost uh, to Orville McKenzie, and, and after that fight, I was reading on Twitter, quite a few people were saying, you know, this could be it for Dodson. Did you think about retirement? Yeah. I, I, you know, you toy with it a little bit. Disappointment more than anything, but I should never have been a light heavy. Look, over McKenzie can whack. He clobbered me on the back of the head. He, had, he caught me. No fault of his own. It was just one of those shots. I mean, if I could have got away with it and I'm near, I'd have done the same to him. But, you know, he caught me, and, and that was the start of the end. And I didn't do the weight right. I didn't train properly. It was just a, numer- a, a number of things. You know, people will say, oh, they're just excuses. But it just didn't go right for me. But it was sort of like. You know, I, I never back away from fights, even though the conditions and that weren't correct. Um, I, t- I chose to fight and paid the price. It's my own fault. And uh, Joe Gallagher has said to me the other day as well that the loser has nowhere to go of you versus uh, Paul Smith. Is this true? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I've, I've been around a long time, as is Paul, a long time. So um, we've paid our dues, but... For, for me, you're the second person that's told me about that, but he's speaking about Paul, not me. I'm, I'm going to go on from this. It sounds like you've uh, reinvented yourself um, over the last couple of years. Is this true, and how, how much longer can you go for? I have to reinvent myself. I'll be the first to admit, even though I've had so many fights and a lot of success, amateur and pro, I'll be the first to admit I had a lot of flaws, and John Rice is ironing them flaws out. The 18 weeks that it's been... To, to do this fight has, has been beneficial to me not for weight wise that's all a load of rubbish it's it's been beneficial to me to iron up the flaws that I've had I've had a lot of flaws I'll be the first to admit it and now thankfully now because of the, the persistence and the, the time and effort that me and John Rice have put in training three times a day five days a week is you know it's allowed me to get it right and as they say better late than never and uh, last month we had uh, Fox Kessler both of them almost hitting 35 what is your secret for longevity in, in boxing? What would you recommend to, to those you know approaching you know into their thirties? One of the things that you need to do is you know is look after yourself, live the right life in between fights. Don't balloon up. I too many times. I mean, I've gone up to sixteen stone eight. I fight at twelve stone. Do you know what I mean? It's you if you want your career to be you know prolonged and make it last as long as you can. You've got to stay healthy, eat clean, and that's that's really the key. Do you know what I mean? If, if you're a good fighter, you've got the tools already. The, the key is to look after yourself. Treat yourself like a racehorse. You've got to, got to eat right, live right. And um, I think that that's the key to you know progressing your career. I mean, Carl, I know Frost doesn't go two or three pounds over his championship weight. You know, that is dedication at its best. And look at the way he performs at 35 years of age. That's why he performs like that, because his body's used to staying in that sort of shape. So that's the key to it. Live a dedicated life and you'll have a better career. Well, I wish you the best of luck on the 29th, and thanks for talking. Cheers, mate.